Hey, good evening. So this video is going to be called Not All Jews and uh, this is important and this is kind of a follow-up to my rant about uh, anti-Semitic uh, propaganda online and uh, all that. Um, and this is because uh, there are some uh, things on the internet that make uh, it seem that uh, and that's where a lot of innocent otherwise well-meaning people get misled into believing there's some conspiracy online uh, on made by Jews because you'll see things that are undeniable and uh, it is important to explain things as they are and explain that there is no Jewish conspiracy and uh, it's all things taken out of context and uh, taking the part to represent the whole and um, that's what dishonest people do. They are so racist that they will take, they're not only racist although you know, Jew Judaism and Jew Jewishness is not a race because um, it's much more than that. And you don't have Jews uh, only from one race. You know, you have Jews of all ethnicities. Uh, so let's stop pretending it's a race. And uh, you have white Jews, you have Middle Eastern Jews, you have... Uh, Arab Jews, and although it's different, it's a little different. You have uh, even Indian Jews. You have all sorts of Jews. It's not homogeneous and it, um, homogeneous, and uh, there are various kinds of Jews. I'm sorry, I know this makes my boobs look big, but yeah, it's the pattern. I'm sorry. Uh, so. Um, the thing is, these people here will take things out of context. For instance, they take things that the Net Ricarda and other extreme Jews will say out of context and apply it to the, gener the general uh, Jewish population. And uh, yes, they are orthodox, but they do not represent the general orthodox population. They are the exact opposite of most orthodox population. They, they represent everything most Jews will contradict. Uh, and so, um, again, they use it to prove that there is a global conspiracy created by Jews. And it's not like that. It's not like that. So take a, a minute uh, to judge uh, people. Would you like me to say that all Europeans are Nazi, xenophobic, uh, whatever nonsense, or that all Europeans are communists, or that all Europeans are Catholics, or that all Europeans are just one thing? You know, the, the generalizing things just because you are part of a group that is stereotypically associated to certain things. And uh, it's completely nonsense. You see people on the right wing accusing Jews of uh, creating programs in Soviet Russia and whatever. And people on the left accusing Jews of creating Nazism. It's so, so, it's like everything that happens, blame the Jew. Now, this only happens because in every other circumstance, you don't judge people by their ethnicity, you don't judge people by their religion, because everyone is different, whatever, whatever, whatever. But when, when it comes to the Jew, it's easy to categorize, categorize everyone into the same bloody uh, bag of oats. You have good oats and bad oats, but somehow 
you consider them all battles. And uh, so what happens in this situation is you'll find all sorts of propaganda and uh, it's easier for people to blame their uh, shortcomings on other people. It's been like this all throughout history. And because Jews tend to be overachievers, and you know, it's, it's like they know hardship and uh, they developed a sense of work, a sense of studying. And, you know, of course, wherever you'll find Jews, no matter how low they start in life, they usually end up in top positions in companies and with successful businesses endeavor and business endeavors. And it's not because of mis misdeeds, it's because of their own merits. What happens is people are jealous that they cannot get such success because they, to them, it's not hard work, it's because people are, something is being unfair to them. It's easier to blame someone for your uh, misery than blame yourself. So of course they will blame Jews. And here's the tricky part. Uh, nowadays you have leftist Jews and these are usually reform conservative. And again, conservative refers to uh, the offshoot of the reform movement uh, and uh, other kinds of leftist Jewish movements. And those Jewish movements are saying that Jews are not white, but then they say they are white when it's to call out people on something. And these are usual, usually used by right-wing uh, Nazis to judge Jews and accuse them of being cruel. They also use the Naturae Carta and they're, you know, I've seen that propaganda and I know that at a certain time I almost got confused by it. But you have to understand that um, everyone is different and just like you have, you didn't, you know, take my country for instance. Half of it is extreme right wing, the other half is extremely communist, and then you have a few good apples at the center. So, as you can see, a same nation, all Catholics, or most of them Catholics, they're not, and they are driven to different uh, sides of the political spectrum, and you'll find this in Judaism too. And so, I will tell you that those Jews that you despise so much for wanting migrants to come into your country are the very same Jews that are threatening Israel, they are threatening Judaism, because they, they are self-hating Jews who only use Judaism as a form of uh, oppression points. They want to be a minority and they use their Jew Jewishness as a minority card. So they won't consider themselves white, even though most are ethnically white. They will call out people on their um, bigotry. They will favor Palestinians over, you know, Jews. And of course, they despise everything about the Torah. They usually, <laughs> put communism over the Torah and they are either atheists or they are completely changing what it means to be Jewish. So the very same enemies that you consider the Jews that are destroying your society, they're also destroying Judaism, they're also destroying the Jewish society. It's not a, um, a conspiracy against uh, white people. It's not a conspiracy against uh, whatever. The problem is not Judaism. The problem is communism. The problem is secularism. Why do you think those people follow identity politics? 
because they're so disconnected from God, they're so disconnected from the Torah and the meaning of life, that they're, they're searching, they're soul searching, and they're looking for meaning. And when they see, you know, when they see political correctness, when they see all this so social justice, they see it as a higher purpose purpose and they're trying to replace that meaningful connection with Hashem with something because they don't know what it is to be connected to God. They don't know what it is to lead a life of meaning. And they're trying to find meaning. And they turn to this social these misguided social causes of theirs. And uh, they make it their religion. They're not Jewish in the sense that they, they're they not following the Torah. And most of them actually contradict the Torah. All they are is misguided. And therefore, they need something to hold on to. They need something. They need a new religion. They need something to give meaning to their life. And so they embrace so social justice. And these are the very the yours the very your very enemies of Europe of the United States are also Jewish enemies and Israel's enemies. They're traitors. They are self-hating whites and they're self-hating Jews, and they do not represent Jews overall. And uh, so yes, you can't of course people are going to keep using them to describe Jews because the reality is uh, that it's not about what Jews do, it's about what people want to accuse Jews of doing. And so that's a great issue is that Christianity has created a dip rooted anti-Semitism within society and even those who have given up on religion still have that deeply enrooted anti-Semitism that was created by the European culture. This is why even atheists, communists and everyone is very much anti-Semitic. Even Jews themselves and I'm talking mostly about leftists and the Netri Carta, are anti-Jewish. They are self-hating Jews. And they do not represent Israel, and they do not represent the Jewish people. So it is important to let everyone know that these are different. Well, just like George Soros. George Soros is the biggest traitor in all of history. He's not Jewish. He's a Nazi. He's a self-serving AO that, uh, you know, all he did, he, he's an atheist. He may have Jewish, Jewish genes, but he doesn't represent Jewish values, nor do all these leftists. They do not represent Jewish values. They are going against the Torah. They are promoting things that go against the Torah. Therefore, the Jews that you accuse of corrupting the, the American morals and customs, they are not representative of Jewish values. And if you think it's not only Jews, many Catholics, many atheists, many Christians are communists. The problem is communism, not Judaism. And no, communism is not a Jewish movement, although there were Jews that were driven to it. And usually these Jews that were driven to it were driven to it because they had lost their connection with the Torah. And everyone that becomes secularized has a need to find meaning and they fall prey to these politics because it gives them a false sense of meaning and you know self-respect and self and value that they do not have they these misguided morals that they create 
to try to replace God are ruining society. Um, so that's uh, another part. And uh, then I am going to talk about the Natura Carta, which are often used to uh, describe um, Orthodox Jews, and they do not represent Orthodox Jews at all. They're a bit seen of uh, like a joke because uh, they're extreme. They wish uh, bad things to happen to the West because they see, they believe that only when uh, there is a collapse, the Messiah can come. And it's also why they go against Israel, they are anti-Zionist, they are anti-Jewish, and they will defend Arabs over their brothers and sisters. And again, they are used by extremely right-wing um, and left-wing uh, anti-Semites to go against Israel, to go against Judaism. But again, they do not represent the majority of the Jewish people. And their politics do not align with the Torah. They're just yet another misguided group and extremist group. As you can see, there's a wide variety of Jews. Then you have the Orthodox Jews that are mostly conservative. They are, of course, Zionist for the most part. They are pro-America. They're pro everything they are against refugees they are against the very same things that most of us fight against so as you can see you need to separate you cannot judge and lump everyone under the same umbrella it's not the same thing and i am not the same thing as my mother for god's sake my mom is a crazy catholic She's not that crazy. She is extremely leftist. She is pro-abortion. She is uh, whatever nonsense. I turned out right-wing, pro-life. I, you know, I'm completely different from my mother. And we are mother and daughter. It's, if, if this happens in one family, can you imagine how many things thousands of Jews they, there exist and you're lumping everyone under the same label. It's just not fair. You wouldn't like to be lumped under the same label as your other, uh, your uh, as Seventh-day Adventists because they are also commies and they also defend certain things that you probably don't defend. And again, as you can see, this is all stereotypes. You only take the bad help apples to uh, categorize and uh, describe an entire nation. This is not fair. And then you have all those that blame Jews for Nazism. They blame Jews for communism. You know, those people, you know, they're just disgusting. You know, that Soviet uh, Russia killed thousands of Jews and they had a plan to er eradicate Jews. And they collaborated with Nazi Germany. That I don't need to talk about Nazi Germany and say what they did to Jews. And why do they say that? Because a few Jews were communists and a few um, Jews collaborated with Nazis. You know, just because there are a bunch of self-serving idiots that don't follow the Torah and sell their brethren to criminals, it doesn't mean that Jews are affiliated with Nazism or with communism. All it means is that some inhuman some animals were too ambitious and sold their brethren like cattle 
they sold other Jews like cattle. And they should not be used to describe the entire Jewish nation. So this is basically what I wanted to say today. Because every day I see this propaganda. Today they I was even sent, I think, an Auschwitz picture sending kind of saying that I should go to a concentration camp. It's uh, it's hurtful because um, you know what history has been really bad for Jews and uh, the same myths are perpetuated ad infinitum by Europeans and all other enemies of Israel. You see, nowadays you have leftists. Uh, defending Palestinians over Israelis and their lies. You have Holocaust deniers in both the left and the right, and both the left and the right use leftist and uh, right wing, uh, you know, those not recorded to judge Jews and call them like the enemies of. Uh, every nation can't you just see this is just a revival of centuries centuries of anti-semitism created by the romans and other pagans and perpetuated by the catholic church and of course later islam and uh, you see that everywhere you see palestinians spreading Holocaust denial propaganda. You see Palestinians telling lies and you see both the right wing and the left wing embracing Palestinians that are criminals that try to er eradicate Jews. After all Jews have been through in World War II and they're treated as the victims. They try to infiltrate Israel and they're treated as the victims. And uh, the very same Jews that are um, going against Israel are used as an example to show that Jews are trying to destroy the United States and trying to destroy Europe, when in fact they do not represent the Jewish people. They're basically misguided, secular people who have no sense of self. They have no connection to God, and as they are seeking a higher purpose, they tend to embrace these frivolous ideologies because their life is meaningless, so they're searching for meaning and they embrace these things. And uh, I'm sorry, it's late. And so, of course, they are being used by anti-Semites everywhere to represent Jews, to defame Jews, because anti-Semitism is never over. It's never over. Whenever something in history is wrong, you need a scapegoat, and the scapegoat for centuries has been Jews. And... It's keeping on happening everywhere because people don't like to hear that they're responsible for their own happiness, that they have to fight for their happiness, that they have to work for their happiness. Happiness, And when something bad happens, they don't like to be responsible for their bad deeds or whatever thing that is bad that is going on. So what they're going to do is blame someone and so far that someone has always been Jews. Whenever Jews settle into a new place, they start from the scratch, but soon with perseverance and family, they create their lives and usually ascend to the top tiers of society. 
Now, because this ascension is very steep and abrupt, people don't trust it and they see it as something that wasn't honest. And they are jealous and they want to steal everything Jews have, so they blame them for whatever. They created the blood libel, they invent ridiculous accusations because they don't like to hear that they're responsible for their lives, they're responsible for their shortcomings and their own lack of success. If Jews can become rich and create multi-billion dollar companies while escaping the Holocaust, when Jews have been displaced and their families torn apart for hundreds of times and everywhere they went, they started anew and created life and became successful. Why? Because they have faith, they trust in God and they are hard working. And you mustn't complain about your life. You must ask yourself, what is it that Jews are doing that you're not doing to be successful? It's not because Jews are successful that you're not successful. Because It's because of you. Your own lack of work, your own lack of self-respect, and your own laziness that put you in the situation that you are now. Oh gosh, and you want to know, you, you want the proof, you want the proof that Jews are not to blame for the problems in society? Take a look back in history, and wherever Jews were expelled from, those countries that used to thrive and have a good economy, they collapsed. What happened? Just take uh, Portugal, for example. Portugal was rich. We had a lot of good commerce. And when we accepted the power of Spain over us and the Inquisition, we lost all that. My city used to be thriving. We, had, we were 40 to 60 percent Jews. It was headed to be the capital of the country. It was wealthy, and of course, when the Inquisition came and took the wealth from our Jews, forced converted them, this city became stale. And uh, you saw what happened to Spain, you saw how Germany collapsed, you saw how all countries that expelled Jews soon after collapsed. Why? It's not. It's 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 the proof that it's not Jews that collapse societies. It's not Jewish wealth that is causing you poverty. Is your lack of entrepreneurship. And of course, if you expel Jews and you lose your entrepreneurs, your country is going to go stale and the, the economy is going to collapse. Why do you think the United States is uh, so successful? Because most Jews after World War II or during World War II fled to the United States. That's why the United States is so rich. That's why Israel, despite having started only 17, 70 years ago, is growing and is the fastest growing country in the Middle East, where, whereas every other country around is just a dump. And of course, they blame Israel for being a dump. But let's face it, they're a dump because they don't work. They, they don't care to better themselves. And so it's easy to blame others for your own problems. You want Jews out of the United States. Do you know what this means? Do you really know what this means? If you expelled Jews from the United States, their businesses would go with them to wherever they moved to. And your country would become again 
impoverished and society would likely get some collapse from it. It is important to learn from your ancestors' mistakes and you need to learn that it's not because others are successful that you're not successful. It's your fault that you're not successful. You need to work. You need to believe in yourself and never give up on in life. You can't be lazy if you want to go somewhere else. You can't be blaming anyone else but yourself for your own shortcomings. And uh, so, yeah, it's what I wanted to say today. And I know it is a little redundant in regards to my other video, but it's something that wasn't on my mind and I wanted to talk about it again. Um, so yeah, that's it. See you another day and bye-bye.